Now, Rupert Reed was a co-founder of Extinction Rebellion and the Climate Majority Project. And Extinction has now been around for five years. But I, I don't know, whilst I'm deeply intolerant of much of their behaviour, and we see today that those that climbed up onto the bridges and effectively blocked the traffic on the M25 are walking away scot-free, I don't believe that to be right. But I sense something is happening. You know, when you ask people, are they worried about the climate, about the world, about the potential damage of climate change, they say yes. When you ask people, should we do it here in this country through the net zero policies and you pay for it, you start to get a very different answer. And politically, we're beginning to see, slowly but surely, a shift, finally, in the Conservative policy. Rupert, I wonder... Um, what you make of what I just said, in the sense that everyone's worried about the world they live in and what could happen to it. But when it comes to the implementation of net zero, there is a slight sense of realism, and that's the way I'd put it, creeping in. Do, I mean, do you see that actually the tide is turning a little bit about what we should do with, you know, with this debate? Well, I'd make a couple of points here, Nigel. The first one is that the Climate Majority Project, which I now run, having left uh, Extinction Rebellion three years ago, the Climate Majority Project, we're trying to be much more broad-based than the movements such as Extinction Rebellion and other parts of the radical flank. We're trying to attract large amounts of support from across the spectrum. So, for example, we have major Tory grandees who are backing us, people like Lord Deben, formerly John Selden Gummer, and Lord Randall, who is Theresa May's environment advisor. What I'm getting at here is there are people in all parties, including very much in the Conservative Party, who are desperately concerned about the situation that we face and who are not moving away at all from commitment to achieving net zero and playing our part in that. And that's the second point I'd like to make, which is that I think it is essential that Britain plays its part in this process. Sometimes people say, oh, yes, but what about China? What about India? Mm. And, yeah, of course, there are issues there. But the bottom line is this. We need to lead. We ought to show leadership. And I think that anyone who is patriotic will understand that where Britain leads, others, others often follow. And where Britain pulls out of something, well, that's bad news for the world. The world wants to see British leadership on this. They've been pleased to see British leadership on this up to this point. But the government's own climate change committee have now said Britain is no longer leading the world on this. And that's the situation that we in the climate majority well, project Rupert, would I like mean, to look. change. Look, you know, we can lead, but it doesn't mean that China, India or, or Indonesia uh, or any of these countries will follow. And after all, they're going to burn 8 billion tonnes of coal this year. But there's, there's another big point I want to discuss with you. And look, you and I disagree, but it's deep GB News and we want to have a proper debate about this. What the ULES camera extensions put in place by Sadiq Khan have, have exposed uh, is something that's been going on with electricity bills, for example, for years. And it's this. What we're doing in the name of net zero is actually taxing the poor disproportionately and in some cases not just exempting the rich but making them richer. Do you understand why there's such public fury over that? Well, let me ask you this, Nigel. Would you agree with me that actually, yes, the rich should pay more? So, for example, the rich should pay a lot more for flying. And the rich should pay higher rates of tax to cover the green changes that we ah. all now want to make, the, the changes on climate and on nature. Would you agree <laughs> with me on that? Well, don't you say, I see, I think we're getting to the absolute truth of what the green movement's about. It's actually more about left wing politics, it's more about big state, it's more about high tax, it's more about control of the individual's life, that, and really the environment is being used as a tool to achieve that. No, that's not right at all. So, firstly, you've got to choose right. If you say uh, poor people need to pay or you say rich people need to pay, if there's something to pay, someone's got to pay it, right? And there is stuff that has to be put in as an investment, which will be hugely rewarding in years to come. This is partly about economics, Nigel. You must know this, that Britain is lagging relative to many other countries now on the energies and industries of the future, such as, obviously, renewable energy. Now, that's a serious mistake. 
Also on house insulation, if we invest... But, but Rupert, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right now, no, let me, let me just... Hang, hang on, on right wind. Now we're heating the sky. We're heating the sky. A third of houses in Britain have no loft insulation. That's yeah, just yeah, crazy. Yeah. Everyone can see that. Everybody wants cheaper energy bills. That's right. And having better Absolutely. insulated houses helps considerably. That's right. But yeah. it's the cost of energy that worries me. And you see, the wind energy firms are now saying they want government to pay them 70% more for their electricity. The point I'm making is that, is that what we're doing in the name of renewable energy is we're producing intermittent, very expensive energy, and that disproportionately affects the poorest in society. That's the really big point I'm trying to make. Look, what we need to do is ensure that the poorest have well-insulated homes. So we need a free program that, to be rolled out to all poor households to insulate those now. Now, somebody has to pay for that, but it's going to be massively beneficial for poor people. Many people this winter, right, are struggling to pay their bills, but they wouldn't be if their houses were better insulated. It really is a no-brainer. So I think that we can all see that there are easy win-wins here. And what, that's what we in the Climate Majority Project want to do here. We want to see, let's depolarise this debate, right? Let's take it into an area of common sense. Let's see what other things are well, that we can all you know agree what? on. Rupert, Surely that's if, one. If we can find areas that we agree on, we should do so. But we'll go on, for the moment, disagreeing in a civil manner. And I thank you again for joining us on the programme. Thank you.